Barshins is brought to you by our awesome patrons. Thanks for supporting the channel. Barshins! Hello everybody, welcome to Barshins. Hi Stuart. Hello Barry, how are you doing? I'm alright, it did it again. It did, didn't it? That little bit noise of... again. We always reference it, despite the fact the audience won't hear You'll it, because we'll have dubbed it. it. I don't know if you uh, heard that, there was a little... Yeah. We'd like to introduce our guest. I would. This is Mr John David. Hello Mr John David. Hello Mr Barry Lewis. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And why is Mr John David here? Well, we call Mr John David the whole podcast. We, yes, the, the, just call him John, John, surely. He's worn a jacket and it's intimidated us. <laughs> it is, yeah. I feel really underdressed and cold. Yeah, still. mainly because of the bloody air conditioning. Yes. My nipples well, are well, I was shaking my hand out there. Cut glass of my nipples. Gods of air moment. conditioning. Yeah. Uh, it's cold. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So, why is John here? John is here for he backed our film, Ashens and the Polybius Heist, coming soon. Hey. I can't do it any more than that. I've, I've hurt my face now. Um, <laughs> And, and one of the perks was, was indeed to come and be on Barshans. Well, and thankfully, he's quite interesting. Yes. Um, dodged a bullet there, guys. <laughs> so how are you doing, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Excellent. It's thank nice you for coming here on in London. And this, I was going to say this cold day. I don't know if it's cold outside at all. It's just cold in this room. No, I only really. put the jacket on when I walked in the building. The, uh, <laughs> I'm genuinely not surprised. You, you yeah. did, wearing shorts and T-shirt before, but now it's actually <laughs> yes, coming to this room. Yes, it's more fully yeah, clothed. Bloody and, hell. Yeah. Oh. Yes. All right, so before we uh, delve into getting to know you a bit better, should we do a shartacle? Let us, uh, let us begin with some yeah. shartacle. Okay. <laughs> Today's article. Today's article from the Daily Mirror, so you know it's true. Oh, national publication. Yeah, th like that means anything Actually, in this country. Actually, they contacted oh. me yesterday. About, Did they? Yeah, what featuring. About? They wanted to make a montage video out of my videos just to put on their website, so I could be a article, maybe one day. Did you say yes? I haven't said yes yet. No, I've been busy filming with you guys. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that happening um, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah I, haven't, I haven't really. Replied so, so they yet, just really seems... want to use loads of clips of your stuff to stick yeah. on the website and probably, probably not attribute free. you properly. Yeah, 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 probably for free. Yeah. So I was like. Yeah, well, mm. I'll get back to you. It depends um, what videos they want. Yeah, is that's it all right. The, is it like, all the disasters or all the good bits? Yeah, right? it's just, oh, yes. yeah. Internet it idiots butchers cookery. Yes. Yeah. I mean, is it my YouTube ones? It could be other ones. It could oh be God. Surveillance. <laughs> I don't <laughs> just, know. Just been filming. You. <laughs> yeah. Man enters yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> man with a GoPro following me for it, like years. So. <laughs> so, man kills seagull after it stole one of his chips by grabbing its legs and smashing it against a wall. Hey, I don't know this story, but I know that it was in my hometown. It was, to be honest, that's the only reason I brought it up. It's because it is from Western Supermare, the yes. seafront. The horrific case of alleged animal cruelty, the beyond seagull. cruelty, killed yeah. it, occurred on Western Supermare's seafront on Tuesday evening as screaming children looked on. <laughs> this is just getting worse and worse. <laughs> We're only in paragraph one. Is it, a, is it a script of a horror movie? It does sound like it, doesn't it? The pigeon that wasn't yeah but a pigeon I'm and a seagull is a very different thing a seagull is a very horrible animal they deserve to be punished why uh, they just attack you and they take your chips and they, they take your, your children <laughs> and your wives and they... when it, when I, it says I'm a not man that last bit when it says a man yeah, you know Arthur Mann. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, yeah Barry has experience of oh, having his on. chips stolen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he hates. We've just discovered he hates seagulls. <laughs> yeah. He thinks they abduct children. You never yeah. know. I, I was the and here's the pigeon, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> the seagull. Uh, but they are aggressive. No, I mean I, I don't endorse animal cruelty. Of course not. But I mean a seagull is a nasty animal. But a killing a seagull is a bad thing. That uh, seems a bit extreme. Yes. Yeah. There I mean, you, he could have gone get away. For yeah. instance, As opposed to, but they to... don't. A seagull is nasty for that. Uh, Apparently only a swift bullet for, uh, to the head will kill it. <laughs> what? Yeah. Is that werewolves, yeah, Barry? There's a very small what? area where... <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, there's only there's a small area of target where if you try to get it, it will, it will get it. Otherwise, it will get, come and get you. And then you'll be I, dead. I like the idea that if the bullet isn't swift enough, it's not gone. Yeah, it's, it's got to be. It's got to so, be fast. So you need a high velocity <laughs> bullet through the bullet. <laughs> that, I mean, I'll be honest, Barry. This guy killed one just by grabbing its legs and banging it into a wall. Well, so that, it's probably again, yeah, quite stealthy. Really... To try and grab a seagull is quite. Yeah, hard what was his well. reflexes like? If you require yeah. some sort oh of God. sniper <laughs> rifle yeah. to kill it's it, it's like Shokasugi or something, sitting there in ninja eating his chips. Yeah. <laughs> 
But, and everyone hates seagulls as well. Like, all the birds. This, this guy like, certainly oh, he's, did. He's an idiot. That guy. Like, just, you know, like, <laughs> pigeons, and robins. The, all for that. the hundredth oh, time, Barry, you do not speak for all birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're just like they're just nasty. Why can't they? Is, this has taken a dark turn and we've only just started. Yeah. Barry's well, hatred dad, of seagulls. It wasn't a relative of mine, honestly, but <laughs> no, I didn't hear that it was in Western. I heard off this article and then I found out that because it was in Western, those people were tweeting me about it, so I never read it yet, but I do feel that's a partially too aggressive. And maybe a little, ta- little tap. You know, go away. Here's a little bit of chip that I don't want or something like that, but they're lethal. And it's scarred children for life, according to this article. Yeah, they've just repeated mm. that bit, in fact, probably for SEO. But uh, <laughs> uh, mum of three, Rachel Beer, good name, mm. said she witnessed the disturbing incident, claiming the man became angered when the bird stole a chip from his plate. Horrified at what she witnessed, Rachel took a picture of the bird for posting it online with an explanation of the man's actions. Rachel said... I saw a seagull squawking and then taking a chip from a man's plate. Suddenly, he then grabbed it by its feet and swung it against the wall. Wow. I heard all the mums say, why did you do that in front of my child? And he said, it's vermin. You should teach your children about vermin. Wow. You sure it wasn't you, Barry? No, honestly. No, no. I I, I would have cooked it. (laughs) (laughs) Don't they have pigeon and chips up north, some people? I'm sure they do. Pigeon and chips? Uh, no, right? no. No. <laughs> pigeon and chips. I'm sure. <laughs> they I, I have spent a few years in Chester and there was someone, I'm having pigeon and chips for tea. It was a thing in London at one stage, yeah. wasn't it? But um, yeah. I'm not aware of it Seagull having escaped the capital. Seagull and chips is the new thing. <laughs> I know that you, know, you can have a pigeon and a bird in a bird in a bird. Yeah. Mm. But no, we, we don't. <laughs> not, not, all, not all northerners. Yeah, yeah. It's very, I, yeah. I'd like to try pigeon. Not Maybe not seagull. So you can have like a quail in a pigeon in a seagull? Yes. Mm. That's the the old woman idea. who swore that down. Yeah. So that's it. It just got killed and yeah. little tombstone. There isn't there a car park somewhere in, in the UK where a seagull just attacks one man. I think he's the car park attendant. It was I think it was at a shard school before, or it might just be random knowledge that I have from <laughs> a, a thing. But there was a guy who literally works in the car park. And no one else, everyone else pulls up, parks their car, and then it's just whatever is him, whenever he goes out to inspect the cars, he just swoops yes. down at them really aggressively. He's just like just they hate that guy yeah, for some yeah. reason. So this story gets worse, unbelievably. How? Despite reportedly being smashed against the wall by the man, Rachel said the bird did not instantly die. And it's had a seagull, tw- Matt. It's invincible. It, uh, but had twitching eyes when she walked up to it and it was later put down by a vet. Oh, that's how they do it. That's it. They just let go of it. Oh, just, good yeah. God. And then they repeat the same thing again, SEO. Despite spending a lot of time on the seafront, Rachel said it was the worst gull-related incident she had ever seen. The worst. Which yeah. is... <laughs> she's right right lot of, yeah. she was over top 50 gull incidents, yeah. this was the worst. Or bottom 50, maybe. What would be the second? I'm trying to think. Um, a seagull doing a really bad song and dance routine. Yes. Ruining one of her favourite songs. <laughs> Seen from Mary Poppins. So yes. Oh, Just yeah. a spoonful. That's ruined it for me now. And yeah. isn't there bicarbonate of soda if you give that to a seagull, it explodes or something? I, I, I have heard that. Yeah. It's like a theory. I can't remember if it's like a... Because it reacts with the stomach acids and they blow from like the inside. Yeah, they just go... Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. That could be a much more humane way of just getting that it. That doesn't sound humane. Do you know what humane means, well, Barry? I just mean like, well, I, I mean, it wouldn't, the guy wouldn't have got in trouble, would he? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> like when you're making um, honeycomb. Yes. And it, it bubbles up. Carbon, so oh. that, yeah. so it, that's exactly what happens in the stomach. Same process. Yeah. Oh, God. I've never seen that happen, so I hope it is true. But, could one of them uh, yeah. explode and just shower everywhere with crunchy if you put some sugar in as <laughs> well? Are you saying seagulls are made of honeycomb? No, no if you, only if you feed them the right ingredients, <laughs> yeah, surely. Just keep yeah. I'm not saying you I'm implying they're just made of honeycomb. <laughs> <laughs> that Percy would be a loves thing. Just, I don't know if it's a crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So at the end of the story is, funnily enough, the RSPCA taking an extremely dim view of this, as uh, one could imagine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Blimey. Listening to a man, he's going around with a plate of chips, mm. which is actually quite un- unusual for being... That's a the, good point. I, I'm imagining he's got, you know, the sort of China plate with his, his little chips yeah. on. You imagine it's a bag of chips. Or a, yeah. You know, yeah, we don't get that in Western. We normally have like a trough, like a little plastic trough. Yes, like a yeah. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So he brought his own plate. <laughs> Just, <laughs> this is the problem. His own yes, yeah, plate yeah. to the... Salad bar, whatever it is. That's the yes. chips were too spread out as a result, you see. Too much surface area. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm blaming him now. So, yeah. so it's not the seagull's fault. It's the man's fault. Oh, no, I reckon he had a, large, a gigantic <laughs> platter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gigantic metal platter, like a oh. like a serving charger or something. He's got like one chip here and one chip there and he can't... I'm making all this up now. No, I, I see. Oh, no, yeah, the, yeah. the seagull might have thought, you know, it was he was yeah. handing out sharing, chips to people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sharing platter, yeah. Oh, my God. What's your favourite bird? I'm glad you asked, Barry. It <laughs> like is birds? the albatross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
Triceratops? Um, the Peregrine Falcon. Perig the Thompson's Gazelle. No, wait, that's not a bird. Yeah, I'm going to stick. How about an osprey? Oh, I don't know what an osprey is. I don't is really. I think they were quite endangered at one stage, as about all I know, really. I'm not particularly good at osprey um, birds. I like a robin. Very robin, festive. Robin's good. Yeah, yeah. It's a solid bird. Red chest. Ibis crane. Yeah. That's a very rare bird. I had a boss who was a bird watcher once, or twitcher. And I said, what's the rarest bird you've ever seen? And he said, an ibis crane. Okay. I thought it was a character John? from Frasier. So, uh... <gasps> Do you have a favourite bird? Yeah. yeah. It's well, bird watching. <laughs> it's bird talk. Well, you know, it'd probably be more like chicken, but oh, only, only for food related yeah, items. absolutely. Mm. A chicken. You know, because you, you, you can't really cook ibis cranes. Or oh, if God. you did, I imagine that's probably worse it's, than killing yeah, a seagull. It'd probably upset a lot of people. Yeah. Um, there's probably not much meat on them. Nightmare to catch. Yeah. yeah. So you've come all the way down from Liverpool today? Yes, I have. Wow. Oh my gosh, what's the train like from Liverpool? It's quite good, you know. I'm jealous now. Yeah. Mine's from Norwich, it's bad. We've kind bad. of come, formed a triangle, haven't we? You can Liverpool down to the south. Oh, yes. Area. Yeah. yeah. And if you triangulate the points and go to the middle of the triangle, there's nothing there. Yeah, Swindon. <laughs> Swindon. <laughs> Wait, what? No, it's probably not. It's probably no, Birmingham, it's, isn't it? It's no. Swindon. It's right down the bottom. I'm trying to think, what was, in, <laughs> think what was in the middle. Yeah, Birmingham, probably. I, don't, I must admit, my geography is poor. Yeah. Oh, I, I, mine is absolutely abysmal. Um, I, I work with a lot of people from around the world, and I always keep having to ask, where is this country? You know, yeah, it's, I it's no clue. Playing Trivial Pursuit, um, you know, my other half always gives me the geography questions because he knows I won't be able to answer them, no matter what they <laughs> oh, are. Oh, evil, evil! No matter what they are. My God! Wow. What do you do for work then? Uh, I, I have the very interesting job of uh, designing call centres. Design, like, as in mm. the physical, how they the buildings? No, le less the physical, more the people that are inside them. Oh, right. I, 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 des I design people. <laughs> I uh, construct people. <laughs> yeah. You need to be happy. You need to be happy. So, do you deserve, so if I ring up and get um, option number two, and you, you do that sort of like the, the, the system within that? Yeah, uh, so, well, that and, you know, dis deciding on, you know, how many people are going to be needed for the, you know, the Barry Lewis gadget. Helpline. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's quite cool. How many returns are you going to yeah, have? Yeah, that's more like. Um, well, so someone would come to you go, I've got this thick product, I need a solution. And, and yeah. Oh, wow. That's, I've never heard of that as a job before. I always just assumed. <laughs> they naturally she, had worked, worked in 22 call centers, wasn't she? Yeah. We had a yeah. guest on yesterday. She worked in 20. She, she had a. It would have been good to you to meet her, actually, because um, she could have also translated your name to food as well. Right. <laughs> because she, yeah. Yeah. she had a form of uh, synesthesia, which means she tastes words. That's quite interesting. See, it was. Yeah. But not always taste. Sometimes it was more a sensation, yeah. wasn't it? That might, yeah, but if she's worked in 22 call centres, you know, she, did did she explain that, you know, that people from, you know, Birmingham tend to taste different from people from Swindon? It's all to do with the pronunciation of the names. Yep, so, um, or the words, in fact. Yes, it was. Pretty much any word, wasn't it? Yeah, so, um, unless you had a really different accent and pronounced the name very differently, um, it would probably be the same, was my understanding. Yeah. So Barry's name, for instance, was one of those caramel cups out of Quality Street. Yeah, chocolate barrel. I like yeah. those. With caramel yeah. in the middle, yeah. What was yours? Um, mine was cold gravy on chips. And matching the personalities. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. There was, there was lots of different variations. Was it, uh, Alec, was it Onion? Yeah. Onion, onion Man. Onion, onion like Man. Like a superhero. Yeah. Oh, that was his surname, yeah. that was Onion, wasn't I can't it? I remember yeah. what she said John was. Did she say, no, she didn't. Come on. We didn't get that, did we? No. Nope. Text her. She's she's in London. I think still. she did mention John. She, as I'm trying to think about who. I can't remember what it was. No. But My favourite was Ryan's, which was um, a piece, same as Riyadh's, a piece of uh, oh, uh, uh, coconut, coconut stuck between the teeth. That is highly specific. Yeah. yeah. They were all really specific things. Yeah. 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 So I was sort of thinking that when she worked in the call centre, that's probably why she didn't last long because they ring her up. Oh, my name's Stones. Just hang up oh. and they need another job. That must be, that must be absolutely awful. I, you know, my because I started off um, working on the phones in the call centre many many years ago, and what I struggled with was was people's accents. Uh, you know, yeah. Because when you're phoning from all over England uh, at the time, I hadn't heard many accents outside of Liverpool so um all you know when people from Birmingham used to ring up I was I struggled you know I, I was only I was trying to get them to turn their modem off and on again you know but uh yeah which, which is all I said <laughs> <laughs> was that the NASA style response to most things in a way it's, well, it's true you yeah. know even even nowadays you know and even more so nowadays that if you you know turn your phones off turn your Apple devices yeah. and Samsung devices off and on, normally they start working again. So yeah, did that with my dad the other day. His router had stopped working. Yeah. Have you tried turning it off and back on again? No. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. working now. I mean, well, it really does fix most things. Yeah. You know, I know it's become a joke. but Yeah, because we've got a lot of 
uh, power line adapters to put the Wi-Fi through my house. Oh, yes. And it, it, literally, sometimes it just goes down, off and on, back working. Again. Really? Jobs are good. That's the old classic. In the house, we had an Airbnb last night. And in the house, they had a power line adapter plugged into an extension cord. That doesn't work properly, That does doesn't it? work. No, that's what? what I was thinking. When the telly went off, the light went off, didn't it, as well? Yeah, that I didn't quite <laughs> work. Really yeah, when, if you put yeah. like, the volume yeah. below a certain level on the television, it turned the lights off. Yeah, yeah. We've not quite worked that one out yet. Yeah, I like, think that was probably coincidental. But, yeah, uh, it was like being in the studio, actually, this yeah. morning when we turned the telly on. To just while we were waking up and just like, oh, all the lights came on. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> like we'll be in Sean Torch's house. I think they like don't that. have their electrical certification for that Airbnb. Yeah. I, I would be very surprised if they did. Yeah. So you've taken all of your knowledge of call centres then and turned it into your own sort of business? You no, I, 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 I don't work for myself. I, right. I work for a, a, a large firm. So yeah. you know, we, we do hundreds and hundreds of uh, different companies around the world. Right, okay. So um, it, it, it's actually quite interesting because you, you get to see um, in my job how lots of different companies work um, and without naming them you know everything from from phone companies down to you know taxi cab firms mm. and you know they're all they all have their own unique quirks and you meet so many different people it's the same as you know any other walk of life where you meet you know a lot of a lot of different people from different countries and you know learning about their <coughs> you know, holidays, learning about their, their culture um, is something I've actually found quite interesting during mm. the time. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, yeah, like even like Chinese New Year and things like that, is that sort of, did you get you over to Asia and stuff like that? Or yeah, so I, I, was, I, I was in India for um, the Festival of Light and, you know, just just seeing all all of, all of the colours and, and, and Delhi in a completely different light that you only see, you know, at this, at this time of year. And right. so seeing those festivals, um, I've never been anywhere for Chinese New Year. Right, right. I was just wondering like the different contrasts of actually wondering what the future of like a call center is as well. Because now I log on to websites and a lot of them are now you can have the help bots where you talk in instant chat. Does things like that restrict that? When it's um, that? Yeah, but you, you know that that's <laughs> what... they like type it out, turn it off, then on again. <laughs> you know, doing um, call centers with with chat is just like doing it with voice. Because you have you know unless it's a automated one yeah then you still have someone there that is replying to you in in, in yeah, real time still sat there, yeah um and you know some some of the people in call centers i know that a lot of people look down on on call centers as you know a, a sort of you know menial job but some of the people that we have are very highly um skilled linguists because mm. we've got we've got people that do all languages across the world, and you know, I, I met this uh, this lady when I was um, out in uh, Bucharest, um, who spoke seven languages. Now, wow. I, you know, I can barely speak English. I'm from Liverpool, so we well, don't have a strong yeah. accent. I was, was going to say, like, I'm from Norfolk, so I'm nice... saying nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, I don't. In the nicest way, you don't come across as a really strong Liverpudlian, if that means. No, um, it was uh, years at a, a, a public school, sort of got got the accent right. out of me. Yeah, because it's there, but I, do you know what, I, I'm not getting a real thick sort of, yeah. If, if I'm around my friends for more than more than a couple of hours, I, I, I come it's home and, and speak Scouse. Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it's like, um, you know, if you if you listen to my other half, you wouldn't think he was Irish because, you know, having lived in, in Liverpool, it's it's dulled, right. dulled the accent, but goes home, comes back, and I can barely understand it. Right, right, <laughs> okay. Do so you think that in the subject of accents, like with... I'm sure I heard some of that. Is it Geordies? They put them ideally as a as some sort of call centres as because of the yeah. sound of their voice or their reaction. Is, is there is there something that you've used in that? In a, um, yeah, uh, you mean to you mean to employ Geordies? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it depends on on what you're doing. So you, you it, when we my very first call centre I worked in, we served the the sort of Liverpool and Merseyside area. So having a you know having scousers on the phone actually helped because the accents could understand yeah um geordie's yeah they have that very sort of um broad accent but it's actually quite understandable when you when you're listening to them on the phone um so it, it, it's it's very different depending on what you're doing because some if you're doing something which is very fluffy yeah. so where you're you know you're interacting a much more customer service or sales rather environment you know having someone who's got that sort of soft lilting <laughs> voice so having someone scottish for example yeah mm. uh, is is very good or irish and you know if you're working in um something which requires a bit more force 
Yeah. Like uh, when the bank manager phones you, okay. phone, phone, phones you up, tends to, you know, getting a scouser in to do that is, is probably best. Oh, really? Then, okay. Oh. I, I've, yeah, I've never had uh, the bank manager ring me a naughty, but I do actually, now I think about it, a lot of sales calls have come from, uh, I've had an Irish person particularly on the, in one bank that I was part of, they would always be Irish. So Because it put, yeah. it's put people at ease. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, uh, have a nice day. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you enjoy that commission. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I, I'm, I was, uh, had a problem with my hotel tonight. And so I, I phoned them up. And, you know, this, this poor person on the end of the phone had obviously had a long, tiring day of being shouted mm. at. And sometimes just literally saying thank you at the end of the call. And I know this from, from when I worked in the call centre. A thank you from someone on the end of the phone does make you smile and mm. does make the next call even better because for half the calls they're getting shouted at for some reason or mm. you know people are very brusque with them because they don't view them as as people they view them as you know almost a robot on on the end of the phone you know it's not it's not a human being that has a life and you know has kids and maybe mm. you know is highly educated at a university yeah you know they don't, yeah, they don't yeah. view it so is it like when you go to like a big, uh, I've got this vision of a sketch in my head of like where they have uh, with the IT help desk and they've got this huge book and it's like, okay, the caller said, you know, it's like, you know, the multiple choice thing. Oh, right? the, yeah, I've seen call 20, centers. Like, yeah, with you know, those. Does that, yeah. does that happen? Does that exist? Yeah. When I started, it yeah. did. And it was written down. Right. You know, nowadays it's all, it's all on computer. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's not, that's not necessarily to guide the flow of of the, the exact words that they're saying. Right. It's to help you get your problem fixed as soon as you can because, you know, yeah. you, you don't want to be on the phone for, no, for longer no, than right. is necessary. So but it's all on computer now. But when I started, uh, I used to go to work every day and have these binders of how to how to fix all the routers that my company did right and yeah it was right so you've got three lights uh, turn, turn <laughs> yeah, to, turn to page it, yeah. 19 it's like one of those books isn't it yeah. you want to go down the tunnel one of those or, lights yeah. is orange oh no hang on oh, yeah. but you know ultimately you know those those, those guides that they're actually really good because ultimately you want your thing fixed mm. the person doesn't you know a uh, person wants you to have your thing fixed yeah. and you know once they get on to the next call yeah absolutely. helps with training as well doesn't it because it means they don't have to know everything off the top of their head i'm sure they're going to learn it very quickly once you've done it a few times but yeah. you can get up and running a bit quicker doesn't it you know a lot of training is is about for for new people that haven't worked in a call center before is how to treat people yeah you know because sometimes especially when i started because i worked in an it environment and the stereotype of an IT nerd that doesn't really have many social skills wasn't actually too far away from the truth back then. Yeah. And so it was much more teaching how to, you know, how to talk to real human beings. Right. I, I've got, I don't know if another other thing I've seen where there's sometimes they have, someone will work at a call centre, but they might work for eight companies and it might be like, uh, I don't know, say four different supermarkets, like Sainsbury's, B&Q, or, or whoever, four different companies are like, oh, uh, so-and-so is ringing, all right, I'll put my B&Q hat on and they've got their Bible then and it's like, oh, yep, call's done and then it could be this one and it comes in like that. Uh, does that happen? Uh, that, do, that does happen. Um, yeah. not, as, not as often. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because, you know, if you're, if you're let's, let's say, Asda and Tesco, so yeah. as, as, as one of two random yeah. supermarkets. Hashtag spawn. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't. You, 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 the one thing you wouldn't want to do is someone accidentally saying hello Tesco's to to an Asda customer. So, yeah. So, so yeah, you wouldn't do that. Um, okay. That would only happen if you had a very, very small, you know, company. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, maybe you know uh, someone that was, you know, the, the fault line for Barry Lewis and, okay. his, uh, and his gadget. Yeah, just so, a, yeah, they hardly ever fail. Right. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you would maybe have... 10% customer guarantee <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. satisfaction. You may only yeah. have 10% of a person's time because you, you, may, yeah. you may get one fault every couple of days. Right. You know, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the helpline for fixing a Commodore Amiga might have, you know, yeah. two in a day nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. no so, point having a call centre just for that, is it? Exactly. Literally yeah, somebody yeah. sitting there all day writing their novel or whatever and waiting for a call when they could be, yeah. They used to work in a call centre. Yeah, I've worked in That's two right. different... Well, well, only one was technically a call centre. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got a job in a call centre without realising. <laughs> uh, they lied to me in the interview. <laughs> they lied? 
Yeah, this was at the job centre. And we had this big interview for an admin job, and they were going through all this stuff. And then the chap says at the end, yeah, he said, the good thing is these jobs, you don't have to answer the phones much, she said, because that's that is bad in a place like this. That is a bad job. You know, like, oh, yeah, good, that's good. And then they took on a lot of people at the same time. We all started, and bloke came in and said, right, you're on the phones. And oh, everybody no. went, but the guy in the thing said the phones were really bad and we weren't doing it. It's like, yep, he did. Anyway, you're all on the phone. Oh, no. And it's like, you jerk. And yeah, it, it was awful. not nice. It was uh, it was difficult. Yeah, because um, we were basically, they just built a call centre out of nothing to try and take calls away from the admin teams. We were just dealing with that right. constantly. And it went really well. And then due to the way the government departments work, they just shut the whole thing down. Yeah. Yeah. I'd already left by that stage, but like a month after I left, they were just like, this has gone really well. Anyway, we can't afford it anymore. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> just, and just let made everybody redundant. Wow. It's like, oh, well. Mm. Off the back of your experience of working in call centres over the years then, did you ever have any funny calls, funny incidents, funny moments, anything like that? Any memorable calls that you received? No, it, it's right. I, I, most of the... Um, the calls uh, that I dealt with when I was actually on the phones were of the mind-numbing technical variety. Right. And you, you, ultimately, it, it came... This was in the days of... Uh, broad, broadband had just started. Dial-up was still the thing. I, I am of that age. Mm -hmm. um, and you could, you could tell from quite often than the person on the end of the call um, if it was going to be a call that would take you 30 or 40 minutes or a call that would take you three or four seconds. And the worst type of people were the ones that started the conversation going, I work in IT. Oh, oh no. no. Yeah. yeah. So I did yeah, the technical okay. desk at PC World for about a year. And yes, yes, that is exactly absolutely the, the worst. Yeah. IT support, as, as probably we've said on Bash before, I did that for a while. Mm. Um, what is your weirdest problem you had to solve? Have you ever had a fish finger in the router or anything like that? <laughs> oh, well, that sounds wrong, well, oh, come Jesus. on. <laughs> oh, no. No, what I mean is, like, have you ever had to... Oh, oh, there's a bloody... Have you had shuttle calls like that? Oh, there's a chicken yes. nugget in my phone or something. Oh, I don't know. Is there? <laughs> That's a very <laughs> weird phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> very weird chicken nuggets. <laughs> Just, just deafen the sound recorders there. Yeah, we've had, we've we've had a few. Uh, it was not obvious because everything's working. Everything's mm. fair. You got your little room um, that you go down right. If it's not that, and you did it, did it on off. And exactly, and you know you, you you try everything, and then. Um, you know, the, the person explains after 15 minutes that their Aunt Margaret phoned them and, uh, you know, doesn't understand that that might cause a problem on dial-up. Uh, uh. And some people's computers, and you probably had this from, from, your, uh, from your experience, some people's computers are a little bit manky at times on the inside. Yes. And um, this, uh, this, this was uh, something that... Uh, we had described because I, I I needed to find out what the name of um, one of the uh, PCI cards was. I uh, just wanted to know what the make was, and he said no, he knows all about computers. So mm. yeah, fine, yeah, okay, yeah. you can <laughs> you red can flag tell up me. already. Yeah. So it, <laughs> rather than re rather than reading the back, he sort of opened the side of his computer and was explaining about the insides of his computer. And, you know, and he said, oh, I'll, I'll just um, just get rid of all the dust and uh, the dirt off it. And I'm like, this might be worth some of the problems. <laughs> are so, what, so did you ever see any really manky computers in PC? Oh, yes. People would bring them in and we'd do this. They had this thing they sold called a health check that went along with the extended warranties. And, yeah, you would always blow all the dust out of them. Some of those were quite extreme. But the worst ones were ones where people would have to go to people's house to fix them. Oh. Uh, the two worst I heard of were one was just full of feathers. And it's, <laughs> it's from somebody, kind of both, actually, really? seriously. <laughs> it's like a chicken coop. It was uh, a pigeon breeder and right. uh, for like some sort of homing pigeon thing, I think. Yeah, pigeon but, racing's a big thing. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, it was a chap called James. He said he went in, it's like, yes, yes, it isn't turning on, it's all overheating, blah, blah, blah. It's because the fans are just jammed with feathers. And it's just pulled the case apart and it was just full of feathers. And what, actually in the yeah, houses? Yeah, it just all gone in through the fan. And, oh, right. Yeah, oh, and so just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. just jammed the whole thing up. And, and the, wor yeah. the worst one for that, is if you have pets and yeah. you oh, because that, yeah. because computers are lovely and warm mm. yeah, right? yeah yeah often you know as, as warm as the sun in some cases yeah. <laughs> and you want to keep them cool hence. and you want yeah, to keep them cool yeah, yeah. but but they're, they're lovely and warm and so the, the new ones with nice flat tops you know the cat sits on them yeah, that's <laughs> right and all the fur 
just get taken in right. through the intake mm, fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that is, that's manky. Because that is very hard to diagnose unless you're there. Because, you know, my computer's overheating, for example. Um, it, it could be so many different things and you don't immediately jump to the cat bed he's on top of it. <laughs> yes. yeah. You've got a cat living in it, isn't the first yeah. thing. Of course, it's so warm, they're just going to want to, oh yeah, I'm going to cozy up next to that. And yeah, like my, my pug's actually, I probably need to keep him away from my PC now thinking about it, but it is actually yeah. up high, but yeah. The um, worst we used to have a ones in... Uh, uh, factories usually because they had a weird damp atmosphere quite frequently but the people would do things like try and move the PC out and it just rusted to the bottom and the case had come apart you know, uh, well there's your problem <laughs> you know it's a miracle it turns on yeah I think nowadays they, they you know they, they make things which are less robust than the old mm. days you know the, the early computers you can mm -hmm. knock back oh hammer yes and they... absolutely and old Dell or Gateway things they were like Gateway a, yeah Gateway. I remember that. That was an Irish company. Wasn't yes, it was yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as well. Time, time. Yes. Yeah. When they, they, they always, link or merge or that I don't know. I never had very good opinion of time because very rarely would we work on them because we never sold them, so yeah. you wouldn't see them very often. But they were always quite. Oh, I was kept breaking. We yeah, had one. I remember right. it was like the family PC, and we were oh, we huddled around it <laughs> just <laughs> for <died>. the warmth. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need a fire. No, that's what we got. The dog was there. The cat was on it. Yes, brilliant. Have you had any other jobs then, or? Is that, have you always sort of been in that industry? Or? For, for the majority of my time, yeah. yeah. I've I, I done, done, done some other things, but um, the, the majority of my time has been doing this. So starting, you know, starting on the phones, working, you know, my way up through, um, through the company to actually, you know, building these things. And, it, you know, the, the amount of people that work in call centres is still, you know, mm. quite, quite massive. But... You know, we have them all over the world. And, yeah. you know, honestly, the people in them are just very, very nice. You know, because it's such a wide spectrum, you you have people that, you know, have worked other jobs that have, you know, very, very large degrees uh, that are working in a call centre while waiting to get another job, you know, or people doing their PhDs <laughs> that yeah. come in and do it during the summer. Mm. And, you know, I find the people quite fascinating mm, mm. you know real mix yeah well yeah because I, I i worked in 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 one call center in the uk and you know it was a multilingual call center so we had people of all nationalities and you know all faiths and it was just so interesting to hear some of their stories right you had a podcast as well is that right uh, uh, oh yes I'm yeah i did this, yeah. um yeah. so it, the, the podcast itself is still going i was a i was okay. a, i was a co-host on it so there was a couple of you or uh yes so um uh, Leon, uh, who uh, is the, the main host of Who Back When. Who Back When, yeah. That's uh, whobackwhen.com. Okay. Um, and uh, it was, uh, it's a Doctor Who podcast. So okay. the, uh, the the entire reason of it is to go through every single episode of Doctor Who, the old stuff, the new stuff, the audio stuff, and review every single one. Does that include the books, the new adventures? Or? Um how discussed the books not yet uh but the big finish audios which are there are i think more of them than there are actual tv episodes good god there are so many of them i do um, there are a lot of that is astonishing Great. because they, they they release four or five five a month wow you know Whoa. every month of the year oh continuously oh yeah oh yeah. wow this hell this so, has been going on for so that's been going on for many years wow. many many years so bloody yeah. hell i didn't know that that's and, crikey yeah and and so i think i might be wrong but i think every single person who is alive that has worked on the tv show certainly in the old days has recorded at least one Wow. So, so they get they get all of the old people, the Fraser Hineses of the mm. world, and um, you know the Tom Bakers and yeah. Peter Davisons, and they they all record them. So, and they do release a significant amount in a year. I didn't even know what? there was an audio version at all. Yeah. I'm, am I right in thinking that because we know infamously a lot of the old Doctor Who tapes were wiped <laughs> yes. by the BBC in a moment of absolute idiocy um do they all still exist as audio every exactly. single one yes. exists as audio good i was um, sure of that so it is possible to get reconstructions that fans have done from the um offstage telesnaps and the audio recording so you can in some way 
listen or watch every episode of Doctor Who, even though I think it's over 100. I can't remember the exact number. Ooh, that's but there's, there's over 100 <laughs> episodes, I think, that are missing. Oh, yeah, it's all it's yeah. all the old ones. So it's all the uh, the William Hartnell and Patrick Troughton ones. So is that your main passion? How did that podcast start then? Was that um, a mutual? Oh no! So I, I've I I, I do uh, enjoy watching Doctor Who to my uh, other half's consternation of making right. making him watch it as well. Um, <laughs> but uh, I I listened to this podcast because uh, two guys started it, um, and then I happened uh, uh, we gone to a Doctor Who convention in, in, in London and uh, they invited me on to, oh, to do cool. some of the reviews. Unfortunately, after I think it was a year and a half of doing it, uh, work intervened and my, my free time ended up being less. Mm. So um, they've <clears throat> carried on without me. Uh, we've, uh, we've been talking about being, me going back to doing some more at, oh, uh, cool. at some point. Um, but I was the, the sort of, because Leon, who does it, uh, the main host, hasn't really watched much Doctor Who. He sort of watched a few here and there. Mm. Um, so I was sort of the the person who brought the information and the background on all the episodes to the show. And Leon reacted to sort of what was happening okay. as a complete new person from from having watched it. Wow. Is that like your main passion then, Doctor Who? Or? Uh, I, 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 you know, I used to have a lot more free time. So watching yeah. well, watching television was always always good fun. But, you know, I've... I, I love sort of science fiction. So, uh, you know, everything from the, the old Star Trek. I think I, my parents made me watch Star Trek when I was young and it was a good thing. Not, um, you know, Sapphire and Steel, Blake Seven, oh, Doctor Sapphire Who. Sapphire and Steel, yeah. This is like, I mean, I know all these things, but... <laughs> <laughs> what the words that exist. Yeah, 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 I know their things. Best Doctor Who story, or your favourite, should I say, rather than best? Um, okay, this is the single hardest question that you could ask any sort of Doctor Who fan. I thought I had That's the hardest the one after. Damn it. I was going to ask <laughs> your favourite Doctor. But <laughs> so what's the square root of 93.7? Yeah. Yes. Um, because everyone has very strong opinions mm. on what they are. So in order to not exactly answer and possibly, you know, have, have any Doctor Who fans just turn off at this point and yeah, <laughs> no, move on to a different favorite. YouTube channel. <laughs> it's uh, only your opinion that matters. I will, I, I'll pick my top three. Because Certainly. I think that's uh, that's reasonable. So uh, there's a Tom Baker story uh, called Genesis of the Daleks, which mm. is um, it was I think the f one of the first ones I ever saw. I was on on holiday with my parents uh, at uh, a golf resort in I think it's Glen Rothes, um, and um, uh, I remember watching that then. It's a sort of fascism uh you know the the evils of fascism uh that that is generally considered one of the best um then there is um one called blink oh yes oh, i know yeah. blink yeah so yeah. Bl blink is, say, yeah, right, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. blink is considered the best episode from modern day mm. can you summarize blink for me so there are the statues okay so the stone statues gargoyles that come to life when you are not looking at them. Oh, cool. So yeah, yeah. It, it, the, the in-universe explanation is that they're quantum locked. So if you are observing them, mm. they can't move. Yeah. And if you don't observe them, they can. So the only way that you can escape them is to look at them and not blink. Wow. Because they're so fast, even if you blink, they can get towards you a bit. Oh, really? Yeah. But my favourite thing, the cleverest thing, is they're all like this all the time. They're known as the weeping angels. They look like angels with the hands in front of the face because they can't look at each other. Because, of course, if they look at each other, they're being observed and they can't move. Which wow. was a nice. Uh, it's like nice Mr. What's the time, Mr. Wolf? But cranked up to eleven. Yeah, exactly. Right, that's okay, actually that's... Really, that's genuinely very <laughs> description <laughs> actually. Right that's, that's <laughs> spot on. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and oddly enough, um, it was one of the episodes which has the least of a, of a doctor yeah. in because yeah. it's it's a, it's a the character's called Sal Sally Sparrow. Um, that's the main character in it. You know, the Doctor and Martha are in it mm. for a very small period of time, mm. um, and that's generally considered the the best. So um, I. Then you you can just go anywhere. So uh, my third um, favorite one um, is it's like which is your favorite child? Yes. Of all the girls. Um, <laughs> well, uh, probably <laughs> no no no. <laughs> it's no somebody I, else's. Of course, I haven't got a favorite. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> some of the very early ones are very very atmospheric. So, um, you know, when you, when you see these black and white sort of um, 
stories and, and how atmospheric they were then. When you're watching them back now, there's one, and it's called The War Machines. And it's um, the start of William Hartnell's last season as the Doctor, and it's set in what was then modern-day London. Mm. So all of the the sort of outdoor filming is is mo- is modern day London of 1966, I think. And you know, looking at all of that scenery then, and they they did um, a an upscaling of it so that it looks very polished for a 1960s TV show. So that's probably my my third of my three favourites, the, mm. the non traditional one. Is that that's a Dalek run, isn't it? <coughs> is, are there Daleks in that? Uh, no, there isn't. There isn't any Daleks in the War Machines. It's um, basically a megalomaniac machine called Votan okay. um, creates a uh, set of Dalek-like creatures <laughs> right. um, in, in order to um, take over the world, or in this case, a small bit of central London. And it was at the time they were doing a run of how trying to come up with a villain that could beat the Daleks in popularity. So they made the Chumblies, um, they uh, did, uh, you know, a lot of these sort of aliens that were almost Daleks, mm. um, the Quarks and the War Machines, and none of them succeeded uh, because the Daleks just managed to capture the imagination at the time. Mm. and nothing that they've done since then has ever been able to match that popularity because if you see the shape of a Dalek, even if you don't watch Doctor Who, yeah. you know, I know, you yeah. know what it is. I, know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's Absolutely. when I think of Doctor Who, I think of uh, you know the, the blue phone booth, yeah. a Doctor and a Dalek. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and that's yeah. it. You know, mm-hmm. um, the police box and the Daleks are more than any actor that's played played uh, the Doctor more than mm. anyone on the show. Those two symbols are, you know, symbols of BBC television. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And the, the Daleks aren't then... Is there like a rough percentage of how many episodes the Daleks have actually been in? Because did they not bring them back or something? I'm trying yeah, so, to, yeah. you know, the Daleks have been in at least once every season of New Who since right. 2005. Mm. Okay. Because um, do they know that's their... That winner, that's going to be... Oh, it, it is. And, you know, you've got the latest uh, run uh, with uh, Jodie Whittaker mm. as the Doctor, and you have massive polarisation of fans who say, no, she's not the Doctor. You know, you can't have a female as Yeah, I was going to ask you, is there a law against that? I mean, obviously not. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> it's um, illegal. Yeah. They've destroyed all the tapes. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. some fans have very strong opinions that you shouldn't have had a female Doctor. Um, my opinion is mm. that you should get the best person for the job. So getting mm. a, an actress that did amazing in Broadchurch, you know, getting someone who's obviously got an acting passion mm. and is a is a good actor, then that trumps, you know, yeah. whether what, you know, race they are, what uh, gender they are. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. just trumps it. Yeah, absolutely. And so, the, but there is an area that doesn't like it. Me... Loved yeah. it. Do you have a favourite Doctor? No. Uh, okay, we're back to the favourite children again, <laughs> yes, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, favourite Dalek? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it's one of those things. Uh, I, I do actually have a favourite Doctor. I, I at least can answer okay. this one. That And uh, not one of my favourite episodes comes from him. But uh, Peter Davison. Okay. Mm. Um, obviously from uh, he, All Creatures Great and Small. small yeah. Oh, I know the um, one. And Cam- Mole, and he? Campion. That's the one. Um, yeah, that mole my off. goodness, Campion. I haven't thought of that for some years. Yeah. Um, you know, he was the first Doctor I watched. And I think that for Doctor Who fans, the first one that you see, it tends to remain in your consciousness no matter who you see afterwards. Okay. You know, Jodie Whittaker, great actor, right? I've loved the the past season. Uh, Peter Capaldi, you know, was a lifelong Doctor Who fan. He used to write letters to Doctor Who magazine when he was when he was very young. You know, he was a lifelong Doctor Who fan, so he, he enjoyed the part. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's a Doctor that I haven't liked in some way mm. you know colin baker he was uh the, the the sixth doctor he's generally considered generally considered to be the worst and then big finish which we were talking about yeah. earlier he does a ton of them and his audiobooks are actually some of the best 
So uh, maybe better off screen than... Yeah, they, they wrote him oddly, didn't they? They wrote him oddly. It was a huge sort of jump from the last character. He was kind of almost sort of violent personality, wasn't he? Well, know? Peter Davison, who who was the, the fifth, was a very placid character. He was very reactive. He was also generally considered to be quite nice, mm -hmm. right? He is the equivalent of, you know, puppy dog eyes and you, you, you know, you wouldn't mm -hmm. hurt a fly. Then you come to Colin Baker and in the first episode, he tries to strangle Nicola Bryant's character, Perry, his companion. Right. So you've gone from nice, placid, would do anything for anyone to strangling the companion. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the space of literally a week. Right. Yeah. And that didn't really work. And there was a lot going on at the BBC at the time. And he was fired. Oh, right. He was fired from being being the Doctor. Um, he didn't even return for the regeneration wow. uh, scene. But what Big Finish have allowed him to do is give him that breathing space mm. and allowed him to have good stories, well-written, and it is blatantly obvious that he's actually a really good actor um, that who just wasn't given the right stories. Right, right. Okay. That's, I, I, I want to go and watch Doctor Who now. Good. I say this day about Where should Barry start if he's never seen any Doctor Who? Because I'm assuming you haven't? Uh, no, I mean, I've, I've, I've caught a few episodes, but um, I think I'll start with the one with the blocks. That sounds really interesting. <laughs> the, what was it called again? The blocks. The, the, blocks, the, the Weeping oh, the, Angels. The, the, the Angels. Blink. Blink. Yes. Yeah, there we go. And it's a standalone episode. It is a standalone oh, yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. It is generally considered to be one of the science fiction high points, let alone mm. Doctor Who. It's very tightly written. And also, you don't really need to know yeah. much about Doctor Who. You just need to know there's a the conceit that there is a police box that travels in time. Okay. That's all you need to know. That sounds good. Um, so that way, that's where you probably okay. should start. We've got three very quick fire questions. Uh, Before we do, I have one yeah. more question. A video game related one. Okay. We mentioned yeah. uh, you are a fan of the video I games. I am. So leading on from uh, my books on bad games on the subject, what is the most disappointing game you ever paid money for? that disappointed you the most personally? Oh, that's that's hard. I really like this question. I couldn't answer that yeah. the other day. Because yeah, people yeah. think, oh, this is I the worst well, game. Ones but, alike, yeah. But, yeah, and yeah. sometimes it's quite a good game that just people didn't personally <clears throat> connect with. Yeah, you, you know, you could say that there are, are games which technically have, certainly modern day, you can say there are games which technically are poor mm. because... Nowadays, you can release a game which doesn't work, yeah, which in the old days, which yes. in the old days was was rare. You know, did happen um, mm. as you've shown a few times. Yeah. I'd, I'd have to say it was some of the um, is it the, the the Sierra Kings Quest? Oh yes, stories. Yeah, um, and I think it's sort of the later ones anyway. Were they're adventure games? Mm -hmm. So you have to solve puzzles to to play the game, mm. but. The puzzles are so obscure that it is almost impossible to guess them. It becomes ran either random chance or literally you have to try everything. Oh, God. Um, there was um, a phrase coined called moon logic, mm. which is where a computer game has puzzles that only a lunatic can actually solve because they're so random. Um, one of the big ones is in order to move on, you have to put a block of cheese inside some sort of teleportation device or something. <laughs> it makes no sense. No reason, right. <laughs> and that's why it annoyed you. Yeah, you, and I can't yeah. remember which, which one it was, but, yeah. but certainly some of those sort of later Sierra sort of um, adventure games was very disappointing. Modern day... You could pick loads. Anthem, which is uh, oh, a, a, yeah. a very recent one. Anthem is a game which launched in certainly only about a month or so ago, but it launched not working properly. Right. It launched with so many game-breaking bugs and the most heinous sin of all, it was boring. Right, okay, yeah. But Beck Hill's in it, though. Ah, oh, so it's got ah, good voice acting. Got, yeah. <laughs> we do three very quick fire questions. Most famous person you've ever met? Doctor Who person, maybe? Uh, I have met some Doctor Who people. I've, yeah. I, I've done conventions uh, and I've, I've done some conventions. So I, I think I've met all of the alive classic uh, Doctors oh, uh, one way or another. Yeah. Um, Sylvester McCoy came to... Uh, open a shopping center uh, nice. at one point um so you know 
uh, Peter Davison is as nice in real life as he was as a character. You know, the the, the companions uh, are, again, the ones that do, you can tell, that enjoy going on the convention circuit. Mm. So, because, you know, I think they get paid, but yeah. they, they are enjoying yeah, it. So, enjoying you it. know, things like Sophie Aldred, who played Ace, um, is is literally at all of them. Um, uh, you know, uh, they're some of the, you know, the, the people I've met in, in, in passing. But I, I like the celebrities who are more like real people, you know. Mm. And I think a lot of people see celebrities, and certainly in this age of, you know, Made in Chelsea and um, oh, yeah. and, and Kardashians everywhere, um, they yeah. aren't real people. They're not real celebrities from, you know, they are famous for being famous. Yeah, put through a machine sort of thing as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, have you ever been in a local newspaper? Only as part of sort of the background. Um uh, I did a few things when I was younger. Um, I was in a choir when I was younger, and uh, we did St Paul's Cathedral Festival Gardens in Liverpool. Um, oh, all right. So that was just my school choir. Um, it was, but I was nothing about me as a, as a, as a, on my own. Right. Okay. Well, it's, yeah. Did you get the group yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And the most embarrassing situation you've ever been in? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. This is gonna be good, one, right? <laughs> Mike's good, aren't they, Alex? <laughs> yeah. yep. So I travel a lot yep. and um, I I get bored easily. So I listen to a lot of podcasts. So, um, you know, uh, listened to, um, you know, a few good ones. Uh, you know, there's The Illusionist. Barshans was a fairly good one. Um, <laughs> slightly. But, um, <laughs> yeah. And one half of it was... There is... A, <laughs> I love cooking shows. So that's, oh, that's cheers. Um, so uh, I listened to, I was listening to one called uh, My Dad Wrote a Porno. Oh, yes. Which oh, is yeah. one of the biggest podcasts, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Turning it into a play, aren't they? Uh, they're, doing a, they're doing a one-off HBO. Right, that's right, yeah. Uh, special. Um, and they've done a theatre trip uh, around the world, yeah. which uh, I went to go and see. That was very good. So I'm, I, it's, it is the least erotic pornography ever. <laughs> um, so they... They read out chapters from um, Jamie Morton's dad's erotica. Um, erotica in this used incredibly loosely. Um, but, you know, some of it is slightly erotic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and even if it was as a gay man, it wouldn't be really enjoyable anyway. And I'm, I'm on the tube in London, so I've come down from... From, from Liverpool, I'm going to a meeting in, in London. So I'm, I'm on the tube, got my suit on, got my backpack, listening through my, my AirPods. Um, AirPods, so then no connection? No, no, so I'm, I'm listening through my AirPods. And somehow, um, between checking my emails and, and, and pausing, I managed to unpair my AirPods or turned off Bluetooth. So when I pressed it back on, on again, um, the dulcet tones of um, he moved um, his fingers down her trail of black pubic hair and then was inside her, <laughs> her with his fingers. Came erotic. Came, came out to everyone on the tube. Oh. Um, so, so, so rather than um, getting off at uh, a borough, uh, I got off at whatever the next stop was <laughs> and waited for the next train out of sheer embarrassment. Oh, and, and, and since then, um, I have not listened to that on wireless. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, definitely Only wired. Well, guys, I'm not, I'm not listening to porn. I'm listening to a guy talking about a porno his yeah. dad wrote. It's, oh. it's, it's not going to work. I, mean, I think that's our best it? one yet. I, I, I yeah, love that. That's, yeah. uh, well, thank you so much for coming on, John, and coming all the way down from Liverpool. No, thank you. It's yeah. enjoyable. Been, thank you. Yeah. Um, Very good. Cheers. Are you on social media? Do you want to promote where you... I, I am, but I'm not actually that interesting. So um, well, you've got the podcast that you might be doing. So yeah, so um, I'm um, at uh, Marius Kane, M-A-R-I-U-S-K-A-N-E. Yeah. And yes, check out whobackwhen.com. So even if I'm not in it, if you're a fan of science fiction, mm. there is some good humour in there as well. Brilliant. Tremendous. All right, well, thanks for coming down and uh, cheers. Cheers. See you guys. Goodbye. Russians.